Donna Blanchard, and this is your Think Tech Daily News for Monday, June 8th, 2015. There were midterm government elections held in Turkey and Mexico this weekend. Both countries maintain their presidents of questionable integrity, but in both countries, messages have been sent to those presidents via changes that do not support them. In Turkey, President Erdogan was all set to rewrite the Constitution to consolidate power into his hands. Now, the president's Islamist Justice and Development Party has lost its majority in Parliament, loosening his iron grip on politics and those changes to the Constitution. Mr. Erdogan has nearly a cultish following among his most ardent supporters, and he has been known to denounce those critical of him as enemies of the state, terrorists, traitors, and infidels. In Mexico, where five presidential candidates were killed prior to the elections, bribery for votes is quite visible and standard, and a majority for the Institutional Revolutionary Party in Congress will allow President Nieto's government to rewrite an anti-corruption system that it only reluctantly supported. The president's party did maintain a narrow majority. However, in Nuevo Leon State, a business and industrial hub near the Texas border, an independent candidate for governor won his race handily. That winner, Jaime Rodriguez Calderon, known as El Branco, said in a brief telephone, uh, telephone interview not long after the exit polls uh, were renounced that Nuevo Leon will be the start of a second Mexican revolution. The number of South Koreans infected with Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, has increased to 87 today, with six deaths linked to the virus thus far. Their three-stage response level has been raised from alert to serious, which means ports of entry will exert tighter arrival controls and people are being advised to avoid unnecessary travel to South Korea. The World Health Organization has not issued any special warnings for South Korea and has reaffirmed its confidence that the South Korean health system can overcome the breakout. Four to seven terabytes of data on ISIS leadership structure, financial operations, and security measures were seized last month in a Delta Force commando raid, and that information is being used to fight the group that now has a foothold in 18 countries across northern Africa and southern Asia. Information retrieved from laptops, cell phones, and other materials from a raid on May 16th enabled the U.S. to carry out an airstrike on May 31st, about which American officials expressed confidence that an influential lieutenant was killed. The Islamic State has not yet confirmed that that leader, Abu Hamid, was killed in the attack. Washington officials also stated that the information gleaned helps them understand how the Islamic State's leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, operates. An unidentified senior official told reporters by phone, I'll just say that from the raid we're learning quite a bit that we did not know before. Every single day the picture becomes clear of what this organization is, how sophisticated it is, how global it is, and how networked it is. On a somewhat separate note, in Germany today at the G7 summit, President Obama said that he has asked the Pentagon for a plan to accelerate the American military's efforts to train and equip Iraqi forces fighting the Islamic State, acknowledging that the militant group's recent gains indicated a need for a shift in strategy. Also in Germany, former governor of Florida, Jeb Bush, is scheduled to arrive tomorrow to begin a tour of Europe before he announces his bid for the U.S. presidency. This is not welcome news for most Germans. Though his father, George H. Bush, is generally well thought of there. George W. Bush smashed a lot of China, says Christian Lammert, a professor at the John F. Kennedy Institute at the Free University of Berlin. While George H. Bush is remembered for unification in Germany, the second American war on Iraq, engineered by George W. Bush, was profoundly unpopular in Germany. Speaking about the visit by Jeb Bush, one German citizen said, the alarm bells ring. The last name Bush summons instant unease. Well, assuming that he knows that, you've got to give Jeb credit for chutzpah, if nothing else. Ahui ho, everyone. Donna Blanchard, Think Tech Daily News.